Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. How are you today? I hope you are fine and cheerful. Today, we are going to learn about observing. This is the first sense process skill. This is a skill that you will use throughout your life. My name is Puan Siti Hasha binti Yusuf. You can call me Cikgu Hasha. I am teaching at Sekolah Kebangsaan Jalan 4, Bandar Baru Bangi. It's nice to meet you. Our sign language interpreter today is Miss Shamila Nair from Sekolah Kebangsaan Pendidikan Khas Jalan Pil, Kuala Lumpur. Are you ready to start learning today? Please have your science year one textbook, notebook and stationery ready. Now, let's take a look at this picture. Do you know what this is? Yes, you're correct. It's a durian. Have you ever eaten a durian? Yes, you may have eaten a durian before, just like me. Do you like this fruit? Oh, I love durians. Who doesn't like durians? Some people say that the durian is a bit smelly. But most of us agree that the taste is great, don't we? Before we begin, let's take a look at the objectives of our lesson today. It is important to know the objectives of the lesson because it will help you to understand what you are learning. There are two learning objectives today. Firstly, you will be able to use your senses to gather information. And secondly, you will be able to apply observing in science. I hope that you will focus on the activities today so that you will understand what observing is in science. So, are you ready? Then, let's begin observing. Let's look at the picture of the durian again. What can you tell me about durians? We can say that the durian has thorny skin. We can say that the durian has an oval shape. We can also say that the skin is green in color. We can see that the pulp of the durian is yellow. If we touch the yellow pulp, we can feel that it is smooth and soft. Those who like the durian will say that it has a pleasant smell. And those who don't like the durian will say that it has a bad smell. All this information that we have gathered is based on our observation of the durian. This observation involved our senses, which are sight, touch, taste, and smell. So, what is observing? Observing is using the sense of sight, hearing, touch, taste or smell to gather information about objects and phenomena. Boys and girls, a durian is an object. Now that we know what observing is, what can we do to observe an object or phenomenon? By using the sense of sight to observe plants, we can see that different plants have different sizes. Some are big and some are small. Some are tall and some are short. We can also see that a plant has many parts. It has a stem. It has shoots. leaves, flowers, 
and fruits. But the plant in the video has no flowers and fruits yet. If we dig in the soil, we will be able to see the roots of the plant. Also, by using the sense of sight to observe plants, we can identify the color and shape of leaves, stem, flowers, and fruits. The plant in the video has green leaves that are oval in shape. Next, by using our sense of touch, we are able to feel whether the plant's stem is hard or soft. The plants in the video has a hard and woody stem. When we touch the plant's leaf, we can feel whether the leaf is rough or smooth. The leaf of the plant in the video has a smooth top surface and rough bottom surface. Next, we use our sense of smell to smell the flower or leaf of a plant. We will find that the smell of the leaf or flower of the plant is either good or bad. The leaf of the plant in the video has a fragrant smell. When we take a bite of the leaf of the plant, we use our sense of taste to taste the bitterness of the leaf. This is a Brazilian spinach. Using our sense of hearing, we try to hear sounds from the plants, but it gives us no sound. However, please remember, do not bite or taste any leaves that you find. It might be dangerous. Boys and girls, that's what we do when we are observing plants. Let's recall what we have learned from our observation of the plants. To conclude, by using our sense of sight, we were able to gather information about the parts of plants. You identified the stem, leaf, and shoot. By using our sense of touch, we were able to find out that the stem was hard and woody. The leaf has knitted veins. It also has a smooth top surface and a rough bottom surface. The leaf has a good smell too. With our sense of hearing, we were able to say that the plant has no sound. Let's observe a car now. Remember that we will use all our senses to observe the car. We will gather as much information as we can. First, let's look at the size of the car. What do you think? Yes, you are right. It is big. Next, let's look at the color of the car. Can you tell me what the color of the car is? Right, it is white. What else does a car have? Let's look at the outside of the car closely. It has a windscreen. It has windows and four tires. Let's look at the inside of the car now. There are seven seats. What is the sense that we use to gather the above information? Good, we use our sense of sight. How about using our sense of touch? You're right, the body and window are hard, but they have a smooth surface. The tire is a little bit rough. Now, how about using our sense of smell? Let's smell the body, window and tire of the car. What do you think they smell like? I don't smell anything. What if we try to hear the sound of the car? Yes, we can hear the engine when we turn on the car. Now can you guess the taste of the car? Yes, you are right. It has no taste. It is not sour, salty, 
sweet or bitter. Now we will try to guess the material used to make the car. Can you guess the materials? The body of the car is made of metal. Good. What about the window? Yes, it is made of glass. What about the tire? Very good. It is made of rubber. Congratulations. We are able to gather information about a car. From this activity, we have gathered so much information about a car by observing. Let's recall what we have learned from our observation of the car. Using the sense of sight, we can conclude that the car is big and white. It has a windscreen, windows, and tires. And there are seven seats in the car. Using the sense of touch, we find that the body and windows are smooth and hard while the tires are hard and rough. Using the sense of smell, we know that the car has no smell. Using the sense of taste, we find that the car has no taste. Finally, using the sense of hearing, we conclude that the car has engine sounds. By observing, you will be able to identify the characteristics or external features of an object. The characteristics are the parts of the object such as the parts of an animal's body, the parts of a plant, and the parts of an object. The size of the object such as whether it is big, small, tall, or short. The shape such as whether the object is a square, circle, rectangle, or any other shape. The colors, for example, red, blue, or yellow. The taste, such as whether the object is sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. The materials that the object is made of, such as leather, wood, metal, rubber, and plastic. Also, the characteristics of the material such as whether it is soft, hard, smooth, rough, hot, or cold. With our sense of hearing, we will be able to differentiate between materials as different materials give different sounds. Like this. The sounds are different, aren't they? Our sense of hearing is very good in identifying these different sounds. Isn't it interesting on how much information you can gather by observing? You should remember that observing not only involves sight, but also all other senses that you have. The sense of smell, touch, taste, and hearing. You should remember to use these senses when you are observing. Let's learn how to identify similarities and differences between two objects. Let's begin. These are pictures of a banana and a rose plant. Can you see any similarities and differences between those plants? What can you do to gather information on the similarities and differences between those plants? Yes, you are correct by observing. So, how do we do that? First, let's look at each plant separately using sense of sight. Let's write the characteristics in a bubble map. Let's identify the common characteristics of a plant 
which are the stem, the leaf, the roots, and the flower. The banana plant does not have a woody stem. The leaf veins are parallel. The banana plant has fibrous roots and it is a flowering plant. The rose plant has a woody stem. The leaf veins are netted. The rose plant has tap roots and it is a flowering plant. Now, let's put the characteristics of both plants side by side. Let's look for similarities and differences in their characteristics. From the bubble map, we can see that there is only one similarity in characteristics, which is that both plants are flowering plants. The other three characteristics, which are the stem, leaf and roots, are different for both the banana plant and the rose plant. Now, we are going to rearrange the bubble map into a double bubble map. Since the rose plant and banana plant both share one similarities in characteristic, there is only one place to put the flowering item. This item links both the banana plant and the rose plant. For the differences in characteristics, each plant is linked to its own characteristics. The characteristics are only linked to the plant which has them. Let's use this information to fill in a table of parts of plants. As you can see, the parts of plant observed are listed in the table. The stem, leaf, root, and flower. We will fill in the data for the banana plant first. We will then tick in the column for non-woody stem, parallel veins, fibrous roots, and flowering plants. Next, we will fill in the information for the rose plant. We will then tick in the column for woody stem, netted veins, tap root, and flowering plant. Voila! We are able to record our observation in the table. Now that you know what you can do with observing. However, we have more activities that we can do with observing. We are going to observe an animal's growth. We will observe the changes that occur during this process. From the chart, we can see the growth process of a hen. From a hen comes the egg. The egg hatches into a chick. The chick grows into a young chicken. The young chicken becomes an adult and is ready to lay eggs again. The changes that occur during each phase of growth involves the height, size and weight of the hen. These parameters can be measured by using additional devices. I will elaborate about this later. What about the day and night phenomenon? From the picture, we can observe the brightness of the day and the darkness of night. It is beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful during the day with trees and lake. And it is beautiful at night with the lights and stars. To observe these changes, we use our sense of sight. There is another parameter that we can observe 
during the day and night. This parameter needs a device or tool to measure. These are some examples of changes that we can observe. There are many more phenomena such as the four seasons of the year, the water cycle, and also animal and human growth. As I had mentioned just now, there are parameters that we can observe in objects and in phenomena. For animal growth, we can identify the changes in body size. Look at the picture. We are able to arrange the growth according to the body size. When we arrange according to trend in size, the arrangement can be from small to big or even from big to small. The arrangement of small to big is C, A and finally B. If we arrange the picture from big to small, we will get B, A and C. We have arranged the picture according to trend in size. Do you know that we can use devices or tools to help us in observing? Scientists always use additional devices or tools in order to get detailed information on an observation. The tools and devices will help us to expand on the use of our senses. Let's look at how we can get detailed information on our observation on a hand's growth. We can use a weighing scale to measure the exact weight of the cheek and the adult hand. We can also use a measuring tape to measure the exact height or body size of the hand. Let's look at how we can get detailed information on our observation of a leaf of a plant. We can use a magnifying glass to get a clear view of the leaf veins. The magnifying glass will give us a bigger and clearer view of the veins. Let's look at how we can get detailed information on our observation of night and day. We can use a thermometer to measure the temperature during the day and at night. The device will help to give us the exact temperature which cannot be measured by only using our sense of touch. We can use the telescope to know more about the stars, the moon and the planets at night. The device will help us to see the stars, the moon and the planets better compared to if we only use our sense of sight, which are our two eyes. All these devices will help us to make a better observation. We are almost at the end of our lesson today on observing. Let's do some assessment exercises to see how much we understand about observing. First, what is observing? Very good! Observing is to gather information using the senses of sight, hearing, touch, smell, or taste about objects or phenomena. Second, look at the picture. What is the sense involved? Is it A? Sense of sight, B. Sense of smell, or C. Sense of hearing. Yes, you are correct. It's B. The sense of smell. Third. Look at the picture. What 
is the device used to observe the picture? Is it A. A magnifying glass B. A thermometer or C. A microscope You've got it right again. The answer is a magnifying glass. The next question. After doing an activity, a boy has gathered information about a coin. The coin has a round shape. It is shiny and it is hard. What activity did the boy had carried out? Is it sightseeing or observing? Good job! The answer is observing. Next question. These are pictures of a plant. Let's rearrange the picture according to the stage of plant growth. Yes, the answer is A, C, B, and D. Congratulations! You must have scored all correctly. Today, you have learned about observing and how to carry out an observation. I hope you are able to carry out your own observation after this. You should remember that observing involves the sense of sight, touch, taste, smell or hearing. Good luck for your future observing activity. Goodbye!